Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you a new tutorial and I've had um, quite a few people actually asking about this and this is about sort of um, so t the people are asking you know to have a teleport where you can click on the screen and do something like that and teleport to that um, sort of location in within your game but realistically I think I can make this a little bit simpler so you can actually still teleport to a location that you want to but in you know different stages and you can choose you know primarily what stage because if we start clicking on the screen it's going to get start quite confusing and um, it's going to be something quite difficult that we probably won't be able to cover in you know say one video or something like that so I'll quickly go through what's in my scene because this will be important for a lot of people so really I've got three cubes here so you can see all these well rectangles and they're all red so they indicate where you can teleport to so all I did was you know game object create other and then cube and then once you've created these cubes I just spread them you know that far apart no real um, idea behind it and just put a red material on it now what I'm actually going to do for this is I'm going to keep the mesh render off for all of those objects so you can't see the mesh now what I did was name them teleport one teleport 2, teleport 3 and make sure you name them that so with capital T and then just with a 1, 2 and 3 on the end and that's just the objects that we're going to have now what I did um, for the destination, so the destinations are the same so the same cube but all I did was duplicate each of the cubes and just give them another name so destination 1, destination 2 and destination 3 but I actually removed the mesh renderer this time and just left that as it was and then what I'd actually do is, you know, take all of these objects and parent them to the first person controller. So select all the objects and drag them onto the first person controller. So wherever your first person controller will go, those objects will go with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually create a new script and we're going to call this um, teleport. And then what I'll do is we'll open up in mono develop. And once that's done, I'll delete the two functions at the top and just start by writing variable destination one colon transform with a semicolon. And then what I'm going to do is copy that two more times and then change that one to destination two and that to destination three. Then I'll have another variable called player and also set that as type transform. And then I'll have a private variable called can teleport set to with a colon boolean equal to false. And then under there I'll have three private variables also called dtele1 set as boolean equal to false. And then what I'll do, like I did at the top, is paste this in twice but change the dtele to two and three and then we'll save that out. So there are all the um, actual um, variables that we're going to have. So we're going to have three destinations that we're going to be able to visit. We're going to have the player, we're going to have if we can teleport, and then detailing just means if we can actually teleport to the destination that we want to. So I'll start writing the script, and the main majority of the script. So we're going to add a function update, add the two brackets and the two curly brackets, and then we'll say can teleport equals exclamation mark can teleport with a semicolon so that just means that whatever can teleport is it will make it um, exact opposite but just before we do that we need to write that if input dot get key down open brackets um, quotes t close the two brackets add the two curly brackets around the can teleport so that just as I said just means that if you press T it'll just change can teleport between true and false depending on what you clicked on it how we can make this easier is if we put debug.log open brackets then we put can teleport in those brackets it just means that it will display us um, whatever can teleport is equal to, to true and false to see if it's on and off within the game so we can just have a little indicator of what's happening okay so the next bit is we're going to actually control whether we see the objects or not so to choose whether we can teleport so we'll put if 
um, can teleport is equal to true with two equals and and input dot get key down open brackets one close the brackets and the um, quotes then we'll say game object dot find open brackets in quotes teleport one close that up say get component in brackets mesh renderer dot enabled equals true so that I need to copy that line paste it in two more times and then say that teleport the second one is teleport two and the third one is teleport three and what we'll do is change that to false and that to false so what this means if we can teleport so if it can teleport is true and we press the number one key actually the actual block that we can see that's red the teleport one block will actually be enabled so we can see it and then what we'll add under here under this line is d telly one is equal to d telly one with a semicolon so that's all well and good for that now and I'll explain this all as I go along but I'll copy this uh, if statement that we just made I'll paste that in twice because we're going to pretty much do the same thing every time but instead if can teleport equals true and we press 2 so you change the second one to 2 and the third one to 3 so we're going to be able to change each time now what we'll do here is in the second if statement we'll change that we take teleport 1 and we make it equal to false because we don't want to see it anymore but teleport 2 now is equal to true because we want to view it as long as we press the um, 2 key then in the third if statement we want to actually make the teleport 3 equal to true and change the others to false so you can see that the first one's false when we press 1 the second one, uh, the first one's true should I say when we press 1 the second one's true when we press 2 and the third one is true when we press 3 but also in the bottom here you need to change d telly um, 1 to d telly 2 and in the third one you need to change d telly 1 to d telly 3 in both cases and then underneath here we we'll want to say that if d telly 1 is equal to true and and oh, input dot get um, mouse button down open bracket zero close the two brackets then when it is within there we can say player dot transform dot position equals destination one dot position then with a semicolon and what we'll do is I'll copy that again and as we did before paste it in two more times and then we'll say if d telly 2 equals true and we press might get bounce button down all we're going to need to change is make sure that changes to destination 2 and then in the third if statement if um, d telly 2 is equal to true then we'll move to destination 3 so if I save this and show you what's going on now so we'll start off that if we press T, T will activate whether we can teleport or not and then if we can teleport in the case is if we press 1 it'll, it'll um, make the object appear so the first object that's closest to us if we press 2 the object further away from that will then appear but the first one will disappear and if you press 3 um, the third object, the furthest one away, will appear and the others will disappear. And each time we actually set um, the colliders, so the actual invisible ones that we've got for the destinations, so where we want to actually go to. So whenever we press a certain button, it will make this um, um, Boolean if statement equal to true. And then we'll be able to teleport to the destination that we want to always dependent on you know whether it's true or not one thing I will mention before we carry on is what we're going to need to do is change each of these other uh, these details to false 
when we're not actually using them. So what I'm going to do is change that to D Tele 2, which um, we're going to set that equal to um, false, and D Tele 3, which is also equal to false, because we don't want to actually um, use those when we're using them. So what I'll do is copy them both into the other two, but what I'll actually do is change the ones that we don't have to false so if it's three we'll change that to two and that to one and I'll click save what I'll do is now go to my first person controller add the teleport script and then what I want to do is add destination one to destination two and destination three to the correct slots and then add your player to that slot and the player is just the entire first person controller that you want to move um, one thing I'd like to mention before you test this out so if you, as long as we add the um, script to the first person controller you need to make sure that all your objects are actually above the ground when you play your first person controller will drop to the ground and if anything's below the ground in this instance and you'll actually fall through the floor, so you don't want to do that when you teleport. So make sure they're a good a, a, above the ground once you play the game. So now, if we test it, that you can see if I press T, I'll be able to teleport. If I press one, two, three, you can see the ranges at which I can teleport. Now, if I choose teleport one, that means I can teleport to that position. If I press a left click, I teleported to that position. If I choose two, I'll teleport further. If I choose three, I'll teleport the furthest and I'll eventually get to the end. That's pretty much it for this tutorial and that shows you know a simple way of how you can teleport to sort of certain destinations within the way that your player's actually looking. Now um, hopefully that helps people out. If it doesn't, you know, leave a comment and I'll see, you know, if we can make something else work. But hopefully that gives you the basis of making something dynamic that works within your games. So thanks very much for watching and if you like the tutorial, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.